It's my pleasure to introduce a recently appointed curator of the Harvard Mineralogical Museum, Raquel Alonso Perez. So pleased to meet you. Hi, pleased to meet you. Yeah, we're here to talk about the exhibits you have here in Tucson, mm -hmm. and you've got so many wonderful specimens in there. Thank you. And the first thing I want to know is which of what you have on display is your favorite? First question, wow. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't know, it's hard to choose, but... Uh. Now earlier we were talking about the rutilated quartz mm -hmm. that was in there, and that was a very old specimen as I understand. It was in uh, our, uh, Martin Ehrman's collection. Martin was a very famous early collector, and that was acquired on a trade with Los Angeles County Museum for another Martin Ehrman specimen of all things, a tourmaline. Correct, a kunzite. A kunzite, okay. Yes, one of the pink, it was, is less quality color compared mm. to the ones that we have because it was on display for many years. I but see. it's part of the three kunzites that we have from Kunz. All right, from yes. Kunz, George yes. Kunz, wow. Yes. He donated to us in 1892, okay. and they came together with the OPA. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen the Opal in Matrix on this place? Yes, I did. Amazing. From Mexico. Yes. That's a beautiful piece. This, it really that one, is. when you put it through the daylight, it yeah. has some amazing inclusions going through that you couldn't see. Yeah. And it took yeah. me years to realize the the, um, the, amain, the amount of inclusions the of that the Opal yeah, has. Yeah. That's beautiful. Obviously, that's one of your favorites. <laughs> it is right now because I'm studying open, so yeah. I have, I'm gonna be at the Sinkanka Symposiums talking about them. So I've All been right. going to the lab and putting yeah. different instruments and so studying opens right now, yeah. so learning more about, about them. One? But that's not my final favorite okay. one. Okay. It's my seasonal favorite one. That's the one right now. I think the one I will go is the Pussyfire, the Appetite ah. from Maine. Collected by? I don't know. Terry Zenix. My, oh, our old okay. friend Terry Zenis. Okay, I, I, I called him Skippy in those yeah, days Skippy, when he yes. was a teenager. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple of the Pulsifer uh, mm -hmm. appetites that weren't, they were in the Karabacek collection on display here. Yes. And I don't think Terry dug those, because Karabacek I think was, they are older. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. 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 The, uh, Harvard is famous color. for its for its good Pulsifer yes. appetites. Yeah. One of the best. Great I've stuff. Seen. And you're also famous for your gold collection, the big okay. the big ram's horn. Yes. You have one gold on display. It's, it's a small one. It's sort of arrow shaped. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a cute little thing. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. the the good thing about that specimen is both sides is crystalline. Yeah. So yeah. you can really see the nice uh, triangular shape of, right. of gold. Yeah, those, it's beautiful. Yeah. Those crystals are all uh, elongated octahedrons, I believe. Yes, aren't they? and yeah. they, it's an old collection. It all belongs to the Bouglis, which was acquired by Burrage. Right. Also late <coughs> 1800. Yeah. One year, no, well, this is some time ago, I asked Carl Francis, your predecessor, if yeah. I could photograph some of the golds. Mm -hmm. And he agreed. And okay. so I went to Harvard. And we, he, we got a flight bag and we walked across the commons to a vault where the golds were stored. And I was yes. allowed to pick out the ones I photographed. Mm -hmm. And there we were walking across Harvard Commons carrying several million dollars in gold, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, so I was able to photograph them. That was one of the pieces I had picked nice, out, so it's yeah. my favorite. Another specimen you have there, down in the lower shelf, is a zincite mm -hmm. from Franklin, New Jersey. And that is just that amazing. Is that is, I don't know if it's the world's finest, but boy, it sure comes close. It yeah. is just marvelous. You know, it's a crystal about like yeah. that. It's just wicked. Our Franklin collection is amazing. Yes. But the whole collection is among 4,000 specimens, only Franklin. Wow. So we are the main repository of Franklin, New Jersey. Yeah. 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 That's it's a amazing. real collection, yeah. yes. I love it when you put the fluorescent light on Of course. Too. Of course. <laughs> That's uh, uh, everyone yeah. that I, comes to the museum yeah. and we do it. I, yeah. I suspect there are some fluorescent minerals in your collection that, mm -hmm. that have not been identified yet because they're still finding rare minerals that fluoresce from Franklin. They're just now finding some of them. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember how many there are now. It's over 70 or 80 at least that fluoresce. From that locality? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Let's see. There were some other things. Now, you had a, a really nice Chinese calcite mm -hmm. that... Iceland. So, kind of, I, oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Yes. I apologize. No, no. Yeah. Iceland, of course, is Iceland Spar, of course. Yeah. It's yeah. a rare one. Yeah. I, I saw a program recently that, that demonstrated that the, um, the Norsemen used double refracting calcite as mm -hmm. their guide when they wanted to navigate in, on cloudy days on the ocean. 
That's that's really quite they remarkable. They used it as a mirror and yeah. to position themselves on the stage. Yeah, they could detect the yeah. sun even when it wasn't visible. Yeah. That's amazing. Maybe Just amazing. Meaning you know, us at everywhere. We that's don't, a, you know, we don't give early people enough credit for the intelligence that they showed and the, mm -hmm. and the knowledge that they learned. One of the specimens that you have on display here is a turn, green, jolly green, I'll call it jolly green giant mm -hmm. two uh, from Maine. Mm -hmm. That was a part of the uh, a big find that was made at the Dunton Quarry up in Maine. Uh, the, the original jolly green giant is in Smithsonian and you have the companion for it. I mean, it's the same shape, same color, a yeah. little bit shorter, but a really remarkable thing. And next to it, you have a nice, uh, uh, watermelon slice Beautiful of that. One. Yeah, that was a that was an amazing find, of course. The main the strength of the Harvard collection is New England. Yes, it's the New England yes. region and it's and rare species. Yeah. So we have a lot from a lot of tourmalines from Maine, uh, Connecticut, but mainly tourmalines from right, Maine. Right, and we also yeah. have some of the. Uh, have you seen the peach, the rose of Maine? Yes, yes, it's on display. yes. It's yeah. a beautiful. It's a marvelous yes, morganite. It yeah, is. wonderful. You might yeah. know the story of that. Unfortunately, yes, I do. do. Uh, yeah, there was a large crystal that they yes. broke up. Yes, yeah, and yeah. Then, what a shame. And that's the center. That's one yeah. of the pieces. That was out of the center. Yeah, I think so. That's where the good color was. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. You know, that was one of Carl's goals was, was to have a nice uh, New England collection. Mm -hmm. And years ago, they found some polyacite at the Gottawalan Pro Prospect in Connecticut. And I was able to trade a fella for a faceted polyacite from there, and I gave it to the gem I collection. In it's Harvard. on display at the. Is it really? It is. Oh, good. It is. <laughs> good the thing to hear. Is we cannot bring everything out. Is uh, we have the collection itself is four hundred thousand specimens. Oh my God. Between rocks, meteorites, gems, and minerals. Yeah. So we just decide we always balance with fragile minerals mm -hmm. because it's a long mm -hmm. travel that we hand carry. So we, I think we did a good, a good oh, yeah. job in bringing yeah. really highlights display. combined with not that yeah. really good. great, but good specimens. Yeah, yeah. good display. Thank you. Now, with 100,000 specimens, yes. what are you going to do about housing them? What's in the future? So we are now working with the university because we have three off-site facilities. So we are trying to bring everything under the same roof. Mm -hmm. So we start working with an external consultant in Canada that he has done many other projects with different museums. Right. So we, we accounted everything that we need. We have all developed plans. So we know we need 11,000 square feet to Excellent. rehouse the whole Excellent. collection. Yeah. So now we are yeah. working with the university to look for, for that facility. I see. And there is few options. So that might take still being talk, you know, universities is a, it's a lot of bureaucracy mm -hmm. and it's a slow, but when yeah. it comes, it comes. So we are working on that. That's one of our main goal for the next five years, is right. having everything one house in one place. And the other main goal I have for the collection is uh, create a mineral vault. Uh -huh. So, I mean, you, like as you said, yeah. some of our goal is at the bank. Right, right. So if we want to show and have it, we have to go to the bank, bring it in house. So it's not, and it should be out in the public. Yeah. It should be out yeah. for the public. It was years ago. I yes. remember photographing the, the old white sloping case that had all the golds in it in, mm -hmm. on the main aisle in the, in the museum. Yes. Yeah. That'll be nice to see those back. So that's what yeah. we, we are working on that. Again, yeah. the university is helping us, but we need the funding. Okay. But we have, yeah. we have the space. We don't need that. We were thinking 400, 600 square feet and have some cases where we can have low, um, external people to exhibit their specimens, well, so making yeah. a rotation good so idea. we have our own good things, <coughs> but also, so it's more temporary because our gallery is really, it's a permanent gallery yeah. and we want to yeah. create more rotational exhibits, so there is more, a bit more active, yeah, there's a, a movement. Yeah, there's, a good, yeah, there's a trend in that direction in other museums, mm -hmm. trying to get yes. outsiders also to Also with other museums, like it would be nice yeah. to get something from the Smithsonian, sure. from the Lake County Museum. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And you have a site picked out where the building will be? It's not a building, it will be a room between four or six hundred square feet and it's outside the main gallery. So we okay. have the space, the design is there and now we are working fundraising. Mm -hmm. The collection is at the chemistry department. Mm -hmm. So they were okay. doing analyzing, as you know, they were yeah. studying the chemistry sure. on the atoms and I guess calcite, the one that we know about. 
and it was a small collection and it was a, a French uh, ambassador who donated a few specimens. Okay. It was a set of marbles and some instruments. And that was located somewhere in downtown Boston in the center, in one of the old buildings. Mm. And then at some point it became part of the... It was in, at that point Ethnoplanetary Science Department, but moved slowly into geology. So it was Agassi, Luis Agassi. Okay. He was the founder of the Peabody Museum. Right. And he wanted to have a really coherent natural history collection for the public. Yeah, so that, he, was, that was the trend in the old days. You, had, you just didn't have minerals or fossils. You had a, a broad science collection of things. Exactly, yes. Mm. So Agassi started and he, acquired, he got that collection from the chemistry department mm -hmm. and then start putting that into what is today the natural history museum at Harvard University yeah. and that's where it's still the collection yeah. actually our cabinets are older than the building itself I the see. cabinets are still on display they are from the 1862 hmm. and the building was built in 1890 I believe yeah, I don't know. Yeah. so the cabinets are older the building and then as I said for example the opal all that Kunst material is 1800. Right. And then you know that was the first the first curator, then went through uh, Professor Cook. Okay. Then Palacci was a. Uh, very famous. Very famous, yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Tons of science with quartz, especially in the Second World and before. And <coughs> then um, from then. So there is a. A whole legacy yeah, of curators, decades, curators, and, decades yeah, and curating yeah, yeah. the collection. Yeah. Pal Palacci yeah. was famous for his Franklin book. It was, mm -hmm. It was the Bible of Franklin for so long. Yeah. Yes. You know, one of the things that I really admire about Harvard and mm -hmm. its collection, after World War II, uh, the sciences went in different directions, and the emphasis was less on museums and minerals than on other things because of the space program, whatever. And, uh, Many, many museums began putting their collections away to get space to uh, accommodate all of the veterans and people coming out of the service who wanted to go to college and there were no offices, no classrooms. Mm -hmm. And so mineral collections in some museums almost disappeared. Harvard did not. No. Harvard kept theirs on display. And I'm really happy about that. Yeah. The collection is outstanding. Francis did amazing 30 years of proper curating the collection. So the only left behind child is the rock collection. The rock mm. collection, and it's the one I love. Ah. So it's the one I'm taking care of. So okay. trying to bring on the collections because we have gems, meteorites, the minerals, and the okay. rocks. So trying to bring all the collection Good at for the you. same level. That's great. Great. Yeah. No, it's an amazing collection, taking care. Well, I'm sure you we have a great team. So. You have the support of the mineral community. That's one, yes, we do. And the university also. I know many people think Harvard, and yes, Harvard is there, but <laughs> museums also have to be uh, out there fighting for the same pot. Yeah, of, uh, of course, yes. of course. Like well. the university museums are different than other, mm -hmm. other museums. Well, good luck with Thank your you. ventures. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure.